Welcome today to the Art of Preaching. Brother Osborne, thanks for taking time out again. You are a, a, a continual favorite. I, I get requests continuously. When are you going to have Brother Osborne on the Art of Preaching again? You know, I, I know personally speaking, I think um, one of my issues with having a less than, um, uh, having an ending or closing that's less than what it could be is just sufficient time given to that. You know, I, I'm I'm a terrible procrastinator. I seem to be cramming on Saturday, and and it's almost like I get enough momentum built up in putting that sermon together that I just think the ending's gonna, you know, I've got enough experience. The ending will just kind of come together on its own. Yeah. And yeah. I, and I think my biggest problem in is I just don't give adequate time yeah. to develop that ending. And yeah. you know, if and I know this, if if I would have my sermon completely done by Friday instead of Saturday night or Sunday morning. <laughs> You know, yeah, I could sure. spend a few hours on Saturday just zeroing in on that last yeah. five yeah. minutes, which is yeah. so crucial yeah. Yeah. as you're sharing yeah. with us. And so I think a lot of preachers, our, our problem is we, we just don't give adequate time yeah. to reflecting on the end and you really developing. For last. Yes. Very you talked bad. about the save the bullet. Don't use all your right. bullets in the. Yeah, yeah, you fan because when people start, you start feeding off of people's response. So when people start responding, they go, like, "Yeah, praise the Lord!" They go, they, they stand on their feet. You tendency to want to fan your guns, shoot all your bullets up every because you want to keep that <laughs> going, you know, because they're feeding on that. People get quiet. You usually have a problem, you know. But you should save something, save something for the very last, a good point, something that is tempted to. I'm tempted to do that now. I'm tempted to work that in right now. But don't do it. Yeah. Save your save something. Say, say something's going to bend the nail over. Say something's going to anchor it down, you know, for the very last. you got to be patient with people, you know, and, and the Word of God. Give it time to work. You know, don't to, you have to keep throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing. Give the, give the Word of God time to work. It's quicker. It's, it's the Word of God is quick and powerful. It doesn't need a lot of your help. If you just get the words like trying to defend a lion, you just turn the lion loose. It'll take care of itself. You, know? ah. you don't have to defend the Scripture. You just Just preach the Word of God. And, and be patient with it. Let the Word of God work in people's lives, you know. And, and, and don't shoot all your ammunition up in some volley somewhere to where you've got nothing left now. Uh, and people can usually tell when you're when you're empty. Start repeating yourself. Listen to the preacher. You're out. You know, you should just stop. <laughs> you should get out now while you can. And Because uh, you need a strong finish. You don't want to falter here. You know, now the plane's coming down. We're descending now. And we don't want to falter here. That's why you have to have control and discipline, not to give everything you've got and everything you know in some elaborate scheme where folks are feeding off of that, you know, save something that will really make your point at the very end. And, that, and that's, it's hard to do sometimes because you, you find yourself stumbling someone, you know, because a lot of, a lot of sermons are, are shipwrecked in the, in the shallows and improper approach, you know, and, and some sermons die in the infancy of, of introduction. And then some sermons you know, they die from a lingering illness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just dies because they, it's just a long-term illness and they can't, they don't have a close. They don't know how to close. I can see people just, they're asked to do anything at the pulpit and they don't know how to get out of it. Once they start, they start praying for the sick. Don't know how to get out of that. Don't know how to say, okay, everybody can go take your seat now. We're going to have, we're going to do so and so. They don't know how to get out of it. And that's always troubling to me when I can see a person is hooked into something and they don't know how to get out of it. They don't know how to bring it to a, to a close, you know, and uh, uh, that's always tragic to me because they have all this exuberance going and don't know how to close it out, you know. Jesus silently, well, I talked to you about that prior to this broadcast, but, you know, he, he understood that he was a good closer. Yeah. He knew how to close. They bring this guy in in baseball at the last couple of innings because every team has got to have a good closer, somebody that can close it out. I don't care if everybody else has got him ahead by five runs. You know they're going to bring a guy in the bullpen that's a closer. He knows how to shut. He knows how to close it out and keep the score like it is. Not let them. Not let the other team run away with it. You know, so every team needs a good closer, and every man must be a good closer. Know how to close out That's so good. all that you have done and make application about it. You know, or the prodigal's not coming home. That's good. That's really good. Yeah.